Well, welcome to another episode of Gallagher's World. I'm Clay Vigoda, and uh, I'm here with Dennis Gallagher, who uh, today, Dennis, we have a, a special guest uh, to help us talk about um, the history of parks in cities in general and in Denver and some challenges that we have to our park system going on in Denver. So without further ado, Dennis, let me turn it over to you and our special guest. Okay, we want to welcome you to Gallagher's World, and it's with a particular sense of personal pleasure that I introduce you to Mayor Wellington Webb, who, I wish you were still mayor, <laughs> but he did a great job as mayor, and he uh, was such a good mayor that he had a running competition going with old Mayor Spear. And I know this because a beloved friend of ours, Ned Burke, who lived a few blocks away from here, helped him acquire the park space that he needed to do even better than old Mayor Spear. Legendary, old, beautiful city Mayor Spear, who added the initial thrust of park space to our city and including mountain parks. But Mayor Webb had a running battle going with this mayor who'd already passed into eternity. And he told me once, he said, Dennis, I don't think people are going to remember that I got more park space than even old Mayor Spear. And I said, I will remember, Ned Burke will remember, and people that care about our parks will remember. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you did to make sure that Denver had enough park space. And I don't have to tell you, we're in a battle for our lives now because the city's gotten itself in such a position that the people have had to petition to put on the ballot Save, park space, save Park Hill Golf Course as open space. And then the developers have thrown a monkey in the wrench work by saying that, oh, well, we're only going to develop 60% of it and we'll still allow the uh, easements to continue, that Mayor Webb did such a great job when he was mayor to do that. So uh, that's my introduction of Mayor Webb, the mayor who continued the city beautiful and we in Denver are sort of spoiled, aren't we? Because we look up to those mountains, out of my strength come the mountains. That's where my strength comes from. Sort of biblical and like the Psalms. And yet, even the mountains are getting crowded and overgrown and overused, just like our city. Denver is supposed to have uh, 1,300 acres of park for every thousand people. We don't have that. We're short on park space. And Mayor Wellington Webb is going to explain this battle that everyone has to pay attention to. Yes on 301, no on 302. That's the sequence of voting that you have to do for this November. So Wellington, I'm going to turn it over to you and you can give the details of why citizens have to pay a little bit of attention to 301 and 302 and uh, Yes on 301, no on 302, and why. And welcome to North Denver. Great uh, to have you here. Dennis, it's just a pleasure to be here. It's, it's nice being in a neighborhood <laughs> where there are actually houses and people live in them and uh, everything are not condos. And I don't have right, anything yeah. against a condo, but I also think that it's important that we remain neighborhoods with single family dwellings, uh, right. kids going to school, close to school, neighborhood schools. Yeah. I just libraries and libraries. little libraries. Maybe I've uh, just gotten old-fashioned. Oh, I've gotten so old-fashioned while well, like I'm shopping myself. yesterday. So, <laughs> and, uh, and Dennis, we go so far back. I remember when I first got elected to the legislature that you were there already by a couple of years. Yeah, I was just we served, one we served term. together in the, uh, in the House. And, I and sat and, right next to you. You yeah, let me sit next to you. Yeah, we, had, we, had, we, had, we had fun uh, during did. that time period. But again, we find ourselves trying to we find ourselves trying to uh, claim our history and not let people destroy it. Mm -hmm. it uh, you know, when we were doing Stapleton, and that was a battle as well, mm -hmm. the question with the developer at that point was, I said, we have to have significant park space. And they said, well, we're going to have parks. We're going to put it all around Stapleton. <clears throat> and I said, 
so th so thankful that New York City didn't do that. So Central right. Park's right in the middle, right? That's right. And that's they a had a great, battle on that and, too. And that's a great it's a great park, one of the best in the country. And so uh, we finally negotiated it out with Stapleton. Now it has major parks inside of Stapleton. And then they built the housing and homes around around the parks. So now you know the question. I think we're asking the people of Denver to uh, take a stand. Let's take a stand and finally say, in this case, the West Side development, we don't want ghetto housing at the Park Hill Golf Course. What we want is open space, parks and open space. We can envision a girls and boys track. We can envision a soccer field for kids. We can even envision a pickleball court, which I just found out what that was two weeks ago. Well, and you'll uh, have to tell me all about that. <laughs> but it seems to be a very new popular sport. And it's my hope that um, this battle is being fought, that people take it on as a citywide battle, because most people don't know that they already bought the open space site. Mm -hmm. The people of Denver bought that site, not just Northeast Denver. That's right. Uh, the the, whole the city. city administration is trying to make saying this is a neighborhood fight. This is not a neighborhood fight. Mm -hmm. This is citywide money bought the Park Hill Golf Course site, and uh, and therefore citywide people ought to vote on what's what's it's, uh, mm -hmm. what's it's going to be. So Wellington, can you talk to us about what 301 and 302 are, and what the battle over Park Hill Golf Course actually entails? Well. The, 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 the battle over Park Hill Golf Course is really a determination of where the values of Denver are going to be. Uh, we are a citizens organization, a group of retired, we had no paid staff, we're all volunteers, and we put uh, through our own efforts of volunteers going out and getting signatures on petitions and turning them into the city. They were put on the ballot by the clerk and recorder, Paul Lopez to put 301 on the, ba on the ballot, which says basically that uh, that people have to have a citywide vote on this uh, area because it has a conservation easement on it, which means the conservation easement basically says that this area can't be developed for commercial purposes. It has to be maintained for parks and open space. So West Side Development, then they did two things. First, they went out, spent close to $300,000 to get signatures on the ballot to put uh, 302 on the ballot, which is, when you first read it, it replicates what 301 does, except it allows commercial development. And what we are saying that Denver is 155 square miles of land. That open space site where Park Hill Golf Course is located is less than half a mile in total. Why can't we just, at some point, take a stand and say no? We're not going to let Westside develop ghetto housing in that particular location. We want track and field, we want lacrosse, we want football for teenagers, young, young men and women. We want uh, pickleball courts, which as I said earlier, I just learned about. I might, I might be able to play the and Dennis because my legs are gone. That's I, can't, well, I, I, can't, I can't play basketball anymore, so this one. Let's say find out me. what it is, I'll check it out. <laughs> And so what we're saying to the people of Denver, if you think what we're saying makes sense to you, if you think and believe as we do, you want to live in a city where we value open space, parks and open space, you vote yes on 301, and you vote no on 302. Let me say it again. Yes on 301, no on 302. And that's the basic message. And what the developer has also done, he's gone out and he's, uh, they've hired... Uh, some, some young uh, individuals to say that we're going to be co-developers on the site and uh, this ought to be decided by the neighborhood in which we live. Except Westside didn't do that very well because all of the young people that they hired to put on their staff live in Aurora. Uh, <laughs> they used to live in Denver but they don't live in Denver anymore. Uh, they left and went to Aurora. And so we're saying not only are they not fighting the battle with people that reside around the park, 
trying to fight it with people they're bringing in from outside the city. And so we're saying if you live in Wash Park, if you live in Southmore Park, if you live uh, in Capitol Hill, let's send a message. That's right. We're going to take a stand. We're going to fight and make sure 301 passes and 302 does not pass. Now, Dennis and I have been around long enough. We used to remember when you could look and see the mountains. Yeah. And we had laws to prohibit developers building where you couldn't see the mountains. You know, it, it, it blocks the view. It blocks the mountain view. So now that's gone. Uh, Civic Center, where we used to could go down and enjoy that. You can't go that there because of fear of not only for your life, but disease and everything else. And thank the mayor for this, trying to clean that up. But it says that our city is tilting in the wrong direction. Yeah. We need to be tilting in a direction that we want to make sure that the Maha City is one that values its parks and open space. And we need to be known for that. That's right. In Wellington, I remember us talking about the ancient Greeks. The Greeks in ancient Athens had an oath that they swore, and it was to leave the city, our city, more beautiful than we found it. And that's exactly what uh, Mayor Webb and I are asking you to do when we say vote yes on 301, no on 302. We want to leave our city more beautiful than we found it. And Wellington, let me just clarify. We're, 301 doesn't spend any money to buy any new park space. The city has already paid to buy this space. This land is owned by the people of the city of County of Denver. But, what, but the developer it purchased the land, the Park Hill Golf Course. It's been appraised value of $3 million. They spent 23. million. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. For some that weren't great in math, it doesn't seem to make sense if it's appraised at three and you pay 23 for it. Um, so they now own the land, and they want to build housing. But you can't build housing on a site that small to make your $23 million back. Number two, you can't build affordable housing because it would cost too much because they don't have the money. And the city had put money in for the infrastructure so there would not be no sewer, no water, no streets, no roads. So the only way they're going to get that is to tax the neighborhood around it mm -hmm. to increase uh, the money that the developer needs in order to develop the site. What we're saying is that uh, if there's a conservation easement on it, the people need to vote on whether they can develop it or not. And when I say develop, I'm saying develop for parks purposes. That's right. Not for housing. Not for, not for, uh, I guess it's too small, the site's too small for e-leaches, they want to move. Yeah. Uh, so these folks are just, anything they can find, they want to put here and not leave the legacy that we think and Dennis believes and I believe and a lot of community people believe that there's a value in parks and open space. The same developer bought Loretta Heights. First, th One of the first things they did was tear down 186 trees out I there. Know. And if you don't have the tree cover, then that neighborhood becomes hotter than right. areas that you, where you don't have trees. So the people that live in North, North Park Hill, the heat because of lack of trees is hotter there than it is in the hilltop, which is only a few miles away. That's right. And how many trees did they tear down out of? 186 that we know of. They tore down over 200 at Loretta Heights yeah. and they've been batting those poor nuns in the cemetery out there. I, I think that's bad luck. Uh, in an Irish family, it's bad luck to mess with the nuns. And one week they were going to stay, and the next week they were going to move them. And those nuns are not happy. And I wouldn't want to have it on my karma. Well, like, and bad luck's going to come from that. It seems like this is a an election to decide whether we want more concrete in the city or whether we want more parklands in the city. It's grass or concrete, grass versus concrete, where do you fall? 
That's right. You fall on the grass and open space side, or you fall on the concrete side. And we think it's a uh, 301 says, we believe that we're not going to let the city tilt. We're only, in this case, this particular developer can then build housing, which I'm calling ghetto housing because that's the only thing he can build. There's a site near there, it used to be East End of YMCA, and they tore down the East End of YMCA that had trees, and gyms, swimming pool, recreational activities for young people. And those particular places start at 400,000, that's for like 900 square feet. That's not affordable. It's not affordable at all anywhere. That's not affordable. Okay, well let me, let me first of all say, because some people a little disingenuous saying, Webb's fighting for, for Park Hill Golf Course because he wants a golf course. I don't want a golf course. I want your kids, your children, to be able to go there to play soccer. Yeah. I want that park and open space to be able for your kids to run track. Uh, a man named Tony Wells had some of the greatest girls track teams in the country. And they all practiced where they didn't have a track, running up at Skyland, and just think if they had a running track to practice. I see lacrosse. I see, uh, I also see uh, an area for walking trails. Uh, I see employment for young people keeping the trails pure and, uh, and, and having a discussion on what wildlife is there. What mm -hmm. birds are flying and what, 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 what other animals would reside on a square mile like that. And that's different than the vision that Westside has. Westside has a vision that they can build affordable housing where they pay $23 million for a site that's appraised at three. Now, people in Denver are smart. Do you think someone can build affordable housing in Denver? Really? Affordable housing? Not, that's not real. Yeah, and I've been talking with some of my neighbors here in North Denver and they say, well, this doesn't apply to North Denver. This is only Park Hill. And I said, we have a park called Zuni Park up there on 50th and Zuni. And it is not an official city park. It's owned by the Denver Public Schools mm. as a possible future site. So let's say the school district gets into trouble financially and they have to look at selling that site. Do you think that's going to go to park and open space? They're going to try to develop that. So today's battle in Park Hill is tomorrow's battle right here in North Denver on some of our park space as well. And I hope that the people of North Denver and all over the city vote no on uh, 302, vote yes on 301, and follow Mayor Webb and I right into the voting booth and vote that way. And gentlemen, that particular part of the city has always been underserved really as far has. as any kind of resources. Right. It's been underserved on, on uh, uh, food stores and uh, it's been underserved on every other kind of little businesses that were needed for a vital neighborhood. And I even remember uh, Governor Romer running around saying, oh, we're going to have mom and pop operations at the airport from Park Hill. And then when I was auditor, I did a study. How many people from Park Hill have mom and pop operations at the airport? Zero. Yeah, I so, think they call them Starbucks, right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, I think, you know, what we're asking is that uh, this is a Denver issue. It's not a Park Hill issue. This is a right, Denver issue. The whole city. We don't want the city to tilt away from parks and open space. If they do it to Park Hill, they'll do it to you. That's right, exactly. If they do it to Park Hill, they'll do it for you. So why not join us in our fight and let's fight it out in Park Hill so they won't be able to do it to you at a later date. Yeah, I agree completely. I couldn't agree with the mayor more. And i got to tell you, I commend you for your stand-up attitude and your courageous attitude 
It's wonderful and it's heartening. Mayor Webb didn't have to get involved in this. He's retired just like me, but he said this is going to be another run for me and it's another run for me and I'm happy to be with him on this and I hope that everybody will vote yes on 301, no on 302. So this initiative really is not just about what's going on in Park Hill. This really sets a tone for what's going to happen mm -hmm. for the rest of the city. Well, there's a marriage race coming up in two years. It sure would be nice that uh, people speak now and say, well, if you're going to run for mayor two years from now, you better make sure you support parks and open space because that's going to be something that we're going to be looking to see where you come down on this kind of issue. That's right. Mr. Mayor, I, I guess you have to ask the question, was 302 put on the ballot as a way of deceiving the citizens of the city and county of Denver? Because we historically always have voted on green space, voted yes on green space. Well, 302 was put on the ballot to confuse people. Mm -hmm. It was put on the ballot because someone said, well, people in Denver aren't real smart. Uh, they'll just read the first part and it says park, so they'll vote for 301 and 302, which is what they're hoping they're saying. People in Denver are real gullible, they don't read between the lines, and I know people in Denver are a lot smarter than that. What 302 does away with is the conservation easement, it allows them to uh, build uh, commercial, um, commercial projects on parks and open space land. And so if you want to see someone come in and build commercial projects on open space and park land, uh, that's what 302 does. But they didn't even say that's what they wanted to do. They took the same language that's in 301 and just modified it slightly so to make you think that uh, you're trying to be pro parks and open space. It's, uh, you know... They're just trying to trick somebody. This isn't Halloween. This is election time. That's right. So we need to be uh, all on 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 board with no on three hundred two. Uh, we don't want to be tricked. The treat is in three hundred one. That's right. Parks and open space three hundred one. Yes on grass and no on concrete. That's right, I love that. Yes on grass, no on concrete. <laughs> Which in Denver had to have so many different That's <laughs> right, the grass can cover a lot of territory. <laughs> Mayor Webb, Otter Gallagher, thank you for the conversation today and letting us listen in on what's going on with our open space and parks here in the city and county of Denver and how important it is for everybody to get out and vote. To vote for grass versus concrete and to vote yes on 301 and no on 302. This has been another episode of Gallagher's World. If you'd like more information on the initiatives so you can see for yourself what's going on, I would suggest you go to yesopenspace.org and all the information you need is there. As always, if you have questions for Dennis or for me or comments about this, the email address on how to contact us is up on the screen right now, and we appreciate you tuning in as always, and we look forward to seeing you at the next episode of Gallagher's World.